Is Blender the future of gaming? Since the monumental 2.8 update back in 2019, Blender has been gaining an insane amount of traction. The software is now the most popular 3D topic on the internet, and there are countless users downloading it and starting their 3D journey with it day by day, and it's even starting to see some industry adoption as well. But is Blender worthy of all the hype? I personally remain a little skeptical. Blender has undoubtedly lowered the bar to entry for artists and has created a huge community of artists who swear on their lives that it is the second coming of Christ. But is that enough for professional studios to completely revamp their pipelines? Maybe, but maybe not. Well, yes, but actually no. In today's video, we're going to take a to the point, unbiased look into the future of Blender and look at the reasons why and why not Blender would take over the game industry. I think some of my opinions at the end are going to surprise a lot of you. I'd also love to hear your opinions in the comments. Do you think Blender is going to take over the industry? Let me know. Now, speaking of Blender and game art, if you want to learn more about creating environments and texturing, you can check out my two courses. I will leave a link in the description for those. So what made Blender's explosion in popularity possible? I think it comes down to a few key elements. Well, for one thing, Blender is and will be free forever. By dramatically lowering the cost of entry to users, Blender has seen a massive spike in users that would have been otherwise gated by high license costs. But this begs the question, how is Blender able to remain free and develop so rapidly at the same time? The software is developed by the Blender Foundation, which is financially supported by the Blender Development Fund. This fund has almost doubled in size over the last year alone and is constantly growing with the help of the community and various entrepreneurs and companies like Apple and Epic Games making large contributions to the fund. The size of this fund at the moment is large enough to hire more than 25 developers to work full time for the cause. And since this is non-profit, their main goals are always going to be offering the best tools for artists as opposed to other software that need to comply with the demands from shareholders or from their own boards. This means Blender is free from the constraints of having to turn a profit. This has dramatically increased user trust and loyalty. And not to mention, Blender is also open source. This label is very attractive to a plethora of independent developers who can work on new features and then add them to the software seamlessly and then share them with the community. This brings us to another big element of why I think Blender has been so successful. It's add-ons. It's not unusual for add-ons to cost a fortune when it comes to other industry standard software. And since licensing the programs was pretty expensive in the first place, there is a smaller market of people that are willing to buy them, naturally. But not with Blender though. With it being free and open source, anyone can develop an add-on and sell it or even offer it free of charge. As a result, there are countless add-ons you could get that make the workflow many times faster or solve various issues you might encounter during working with the software. These add-ons allow you to get anything from hard surface modeling tools to management and productivity add-ons. There's stuff for rendering and lighting, texturing, ArcVis, and many, many more. It's really easy to see why so many people are starting to learn Blender and considering it to be the new golden child of the 3D world. All of these features, highly documented and explained online, packed in a neat, friendly software that doesn't cost a dime, really makes for an ever-increasing wave of junior 3D artists that use it exclusively. And since these artists will all need jobs in the future, many studios have started including Blender in their pipeline or just allowing their workforce to skip the leading suites altogether and just use whatever feels comfortable. For a lot of junior artists, this software is Blender. Industry giants like Epic Games, Microsoft, and Ubisoft are sponsoring Blender's development and allowing their employees to use it where they see fit. Anime studio Kara, who was responsible for Evangelion, declared they are moving to Blender as early as 2019. And not only that, some Hollywood movies, films, and TV shows are now using it for part of their CGI budget. So why isn't Blender industry standard already? What exactly is stopping it from getting to the top? Well, for one, Blender is lacking in a few essential tools that, in my opinion, make other 3D packages a much more attractive choice for studios. There are plenty examples of this. Without essential add-ons like Retopo Flow, Blender's base UVing options don't quite stack up to Maya's expansive toolset. And while Blender's real-time rendering engine, Eevee, is great for prototyping and concepting, I feel that it's a little lacking when compared to standalone rendering software that's already deeply ingrained into studio pipelines. 
from hair simulations to animation, lighting, and compositing, there are already a ton of better options out there that are already being used in the game industry. Another important point to consider that most people don't think about is the cost of retraining employees and rebuilding workflow pipelines. Now, large studios are slow, lumbering beasts, and even the smallest changes can take a lot of time and money to implement. Having to uproot decades of workflow optimization and custom code would take a studio months, if not years, to get back up to the same productivity level they were at before introducing Blender. It would also take employees several months at least to get up to speed as well, which costs even more time and money. It just doesn't make sense for most studios. But out of all of these points, I think the most condemning argument against Blender is the simplest one. Studios don't need another modeling software. What makes Blender so special compared to powerful software like Maya, which is already so deeply ingrained into studio pipelines? What problem is Blender solving that other software isn't already solving? I haven't seen anyone really come up with a decent answer to this question, besides just saying Blender is the jack of all trades software. But considering studios already have specialized software for texturing, rendering, lighting, and compositing in their pipeline, it doesn't really seem like a strong argument to me. Again, it just doesn't make sense. I would love to hear what you guys think about this. Where do you see Blender in five years? What about 10 years? Do you see it taking over the industry eventually? Well, in my opinion, there is no denying Blender's popularity. I think people are confusing amateur adoption for industry adoption. These are two very different things. For amateur and indie studios, Blender is a great choice. But for larger studios where the price of expensive licenses is negligible, why change what's already proven to work? But there's a crucial piece of information I haven't told you yet. What if I told you that there was a software more powerful than both Blender and Maya combined? And what if I told you that this software is actually taking over the game industry as we speak? Well, if you're interested in learning more about that, click the video on your screen to keep learning.